And good evening. We are following a lot of breaking news tonight as we come on the air. We want to start with a strain of the bird flu never detected in humans before. It's now being blamed for the death of a man in Mexico. Here's what we know right now. A 59-year-old man died back on April 24th. The World, the World Health Organization says he died after contracting the H5N2 strain of the virus. But they aren't exactly sure because he had no previous exposure to poultry or to other animals. They're not sure how he got it. His death came a week after developing a fever, shortness of breath, diarrhea, and nausea. The organization adding he did suffer from underlying health issues. The announcement comes as an outbreak of a different and more common strain of the bird flu was detected in a number of dairy cows in the U.S. There have also been at least three human cases tied to the H5N1 strain right here in the U.S., all connected to farm workers. These are the symptoms for the avian flu strain currently circulating around the U.S. It includes fever, sore throat, eye redness, among other symptoms similar to colds. There are a number of questions tonight, including if this new strain has made its way into the U.S. Ahead, we speak with a doctor about the risks. But first, we want to start with NBC News correspondent Sam Brock, who joins us tonight from Miami. So, Sam, talk to us about this case that we know out of Mexico that we're covering tonight. You know, the weird thing is here is that he was not in any contact with any livestock or poultry, so they're not sure yeah. how he got it. Do we know if he was in contact with lots of other people? A decent number of people, Tom. And so the World Health Organization says this 59-year-old had about 30 contacts. 17 of them were at the hospital. One of those people reported having a runny nose. But, Tom, not one of them tested positive for this strain of the avian flu. Now, here's what's interesting. There were 12 other contacts near that man's house. They said that seven of those people were symptomatic, five asymptomatic. It's not clear exactly what symptomatic means. But, again, none of them tested positive either. Now, were the seven symptomatic at one point control? Contracting a strain of this virus, but it just didn't affect them the same way, and they didn't test positive by the time the testing actually proceeded, or did they never get it at all? Not clear. But among almost three dozen contacts so far, this man is the only one to actually test positive for this strain, H5N1. So what do we know about this new strain, right? And, and how is it different from what's been circulating in the U.S. in, in our livestock? Sure, and I should say, sorry, H5N2 is the version in Mexico. Right. H5N1 is the version in the United States. As for H5N1, it had been running rampant, as you said, through cattle. It had led to cases, positive cases of three people at least in the United States have contracted it. None of them died, but it was also obviously poultry before it was cattle in the U.S. When it comes to Mexico, so far, the only cases have been in poultry. And again, as you mentioned, Tom, this had not been detected in a single human anywhere in the world until now. It's the only case, and he has died. But there is a backstory to this. That 59-year-old man, according to his relatives, Tom, was bedridden for some three weeks with other conditions, right, unrelated to the acute symptoms he experienced from H5N2, but then also had underlying medical conditions and then reports these symptoms. So is this a function of his medical health, or is it a function of the strain itself? That's what scientists right now are trying to determine. And the weird thing is, if he's been bedridden for all those weeks, how did this guy get it? I'm sure we'll learn more in the weeks ahead. We hope to learn more. Sam, we thank you for handling that breaking news. For more information on the potential risks of this virus, I'm joined tonight by Dr. Nahid Badalia. She's an infectious disease physician and founding director of Boston University Center on Emerging Infectious Diseases. We thank you so much because you're an expert in this field. I, I first want to be very transparent with our audience here. We do not want to scare anybody, and I don't want to scare viewers out there because we're just getting out of the pandemic, right? So, doctor, if you can kind of walk us through this, what do we need to be concerned about, if anything at all, tonight? Laura, Tom, I wanted to start by saying both in the case of H5N1, which is circulating here in the U.S., or in the case of H5N2, the risk to the general public as of now still remains pretty low. For H5N2, the infection that just happened in Mexico, we don't even know if it can be transmitted human to human yet. As you said, this is generally a virus that goes from poultry or birds into humans. Of course, what's strange about this is that this is a person who clearly didn't have that exposure. Um, so I think coming weeks is, are going to tell us a little bit more. But in terms of how you protect yourself here in the U.S. with what's, what's going on, because it's circulating among cattle and it's circulating among birds, the biggest thing to do is to stay away from sick animals. And we know that this virus could appear in raw milk before it's pasteurized and hence always drink pasteurized milk and avoid raw milk. Those are some of the basic things that you can do to avoid that particular um, outbreak that's going on. Is it, is it transmitted at all uh, through eating beef or chicken? So there is. 
Yep, there is no evidence currently that there is a risk of transmission uh, because the USDA did a study looking at beef muscle um, and symptomatic cattle that they looked at, and in the hundred something samples that they looked at, only one was positive. And in most cases, in cooking, killed it. And so there's to to date, nothing has been documented that shows that that could be a risk. So I would not. I would not be worried about it at this point. That's good news. Explain how humans and especially farm workers get this. Because from what I've read, that it's transmitted from cows that are sick. Is it respiratory? Is that is that how it's transferred? Yeah, I, I want to differentiate what's going on in Mexico from this. So fr from the H5N1 that's going on here in the U.S., what's going on here in the U.S. is a little bit more concerning because we're seeing this H5N1 outbreak appear in the first time in dairy cattle, and it's really spreading. As of yesterday, it was nine states and 82 farms. And of course, what the thought is that majority of that exposure is farm workers working very closely, uh, in some cases with that raw milk that has a high amount of virus. Uh, but there is a concern that we don't know enough about how it's being transmitted on farms between animals or between animals and humans. That's why additional testing is needed to nail that down. To date, though, there is no evidence that there is sustained human-to-human -human transmission of H5N1 here in the United States yet. So, but we want to keep testing to make sure yeah. it doesn't change. So, you know, cattle are penned in in farms. Is the theory that a sick cow... A uh, sick bull is then sold to another farm and then it's carrying the virus. The, the rancher didn't know this and then it spreads that way. Yeah, the USDA has introduced actually uh, requirements to say that if there is you know, if there are sick cows that they should be tested. Now, this is not, I don't know that it goes far enough because we're not testing every animal on every farm. Yes, so absolutely, the cattle movement is probably impacting how big this outbreak is getting and then creating opportunities where infections may jump from cows into humans. Now, the concerning thing is summer is coming and then you are going to have, you know, farm fairs, right, agricultural fairs, people may be interacting with cattle. So one other thing I want to add to my earlier answer is if you're going to those cattle fairs or other places where you might be interacting with uh, both barnyard animals and, of course, poultry. Just just be careful. Stay away from sick animals. Always sanitize your head. State fairs can always be so big in the summer. Real quick, just again, because I want to reiterate this point. If you're at home watching this, do you need to be, I don't want to say uh, concerned. Well, yeah, do you need to be concerned or just to be aware of where you're going this summer and if you're going to be around anyone who treats livestock? No, I think in general, the risk to general public remains low. As I said, I think you want to stay away from sick birds. Believe it or not, 96 million birds were detected having H5N1, the virus that's going on in here in the U.S. In when you say stay away from years, birds, so. I'm, I'm just I'm just like, I mean, I'm not a bird guy, so I don't have interactions with birds. Like, what exactly yeah. do you mean? Do you mean like seagulls? Do you mean pigeons here in New York? Or do you mean like pet pet birds? Truly so many species, but the, the underlying thing is stay away from sick birds. You know, I can totally see there were detected birds in Central Park with this virus. You want to keep your kids and your and your dogs away from getting into sick birds or getting around sick birds. That's a possible transmission. But other than that, most people don't have contact with birds, as you said. Dr. Bedelia, we thank you so much for being on Top Story tonight. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.